Hello, welcome back. So in this video, I'd like to show you a little bit more about uh, Simulation Express and what we've done uh, with this video series. Is we're taking a part that, uh, a, an assembly that was made in SolidWorks Professional and doing Simulation Express on it. Now, Simulation Express doesn't allow you to do a uh, simulation on uh, an assembly, but what we've done in the previous video, you may want to look that up and uh, take a look at that video if you haven't had a chance. What we did is we saved that video as a part and it took all the different bodies, solid bodies of that part, and combine them together with a combined feature tool into one solid body so that we can run a simulation on that. So what we're doing here, and what I did uh, in, the, in the interim between the videos, is I kind of changed some of the parameters of our original assembly a little bit. What we did is we had some tenth of an inch uh, thickness parts. I made them a quarter of an inch, a little bit beefier, so uh, and the results come out a little bit better. And um, and uh, I went ahead and saved that. If you remember in the last film, we saved uh, our assembly part as plates one. And this is now plates two. And one advantage of doing that is we can save as we continue to go through this iter iter uh, iterative process is that we save uh, different uh, simulation results for each, each uh, assembly part that we save. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's uh, get out of that. Let's go to Tools. Our next step is to go ahead and start uh, Simulation Express. If you go to Tools and click on that, oh, went to cost in. So click on Tools, and what it, what I need to do, what you need to do, is select the, the item that's right on top of Flow Express. I'm sorry, that's right on the line. I can't really get it in the screen. But it's the next one up called Simulation Express. The one on top of, the, on, on top of that is DFM Express and DriveWorks Express and SolidWorks Explorer. So it's fourth one down, one just on top of Flow Express. Clicking that, what it's doing is it's going to load uh, a, you know, the simulation program over here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to make all of our options over here. And everything that we've done is going to be loaded over here. So if you look over here in a Properties Manager, uh, search with Simulation Express. Our plates do as the part. We're going to define fixtures, our loads, and everything else that we choose over here is going to get populated over here. So let's focus over here and take a look at things. What we want to do maybe initially is go to Options uh, and choose uh, the system we use instead of uh, International Standards, go to English. And uh, you can choose a result location here if you want to do that. Uh, it'll make it a little bit more predictable if you can put it in a place where you can find it. So I'm going to put it in my Documents folder, and yeah, where is that? There it is, my Documents, and I have a folder in here called Clamps, I'm going to, or Clamp I'm going to use. So I'm going to go to OK, and then we're going to go to the next step. What it does is it gives us a list, so all the steps are going to go through until we get to the very end. So with fixtures, uh, items in the, on our uh, assembly part that we're going to fix, we're going to put a load on it. We're going to put um, uh, you know, assign our material on it. We're going to do run, look at the results. But we're not going to do the optimize, and I'll cover that here in just a moment. So we're going to add a fixture. And by the way, if you click, not click, but maybe hover your mouse over each one of these items up here, it shows you what, the, what uh, each one of these fixtures will do once you apply it. So here's where we fix a hole. This is where we fix the bottom of a shaft of something that's going to get uh, torqued on the top. And there's some uh, item that's going to be fastened on there and how it's, uh, how it's going to look. So we're going to add a fixture. And we're going to add two items to this. We're going to click on that surface, which defines that hole in this back face. And what that does is it's going to fix those two items. Uh, the hole over here is going to be as if we have a fastener in there. So we're going to go ahead and fasten that, and then we're going to go to the green check mark. Now, depending on your scenario, uh, you might want to try different things in here, and you have to think this through a little bit, uh, what is going to be most appropriate for what you're trying to trying to do here. So we're going to go to the green check mark. So that's it. We're going to go to the next one now. You have an option here to add uh, you know, additional features or fixtures, if you like, uh, on top of what we have here. We're not going to do that. But you can also edit what's already in here, or you can go to next. So now you'll notice that the fixture uh, section in here has been populated by fix four. It would be fix one for you because it's your first one. I've done this a few times, so it's fix four. So now we're going to go to next. We're going to go to loads. We're going to add a force. You could add a force, or you could add a pressure. Uh, force gives you a little bit more options, and if you want to choose the other one, you have to make sure you X that out. We can go to pressure, and um, you know, pressure is probably a little bit more appropriate for something that's going to have a, you know, a, you know, a constant uh, pressure amongst all your items here. 
But I'm going to choose, kind of like a pressure vessel, by the way, but I'm going to choose a force instead because that's going to be a little bit more appropriate to what a client is uh, working through right now. And I'm going to click on three faces in order to apply that force. I'm going to put in 100 PSI, or 100 uh, uh, foot-pounds, or a pound uh, force, I should say. Sorry about that. Make sure your units are in P, uh, IPS, inch-pound seconds. And instead of per item, instead of 100 uh, pound force per each one of these sections here, I'm going to make it a total. It's going to be, uh, it's going to apply it towards all three of these elements in there. Again, your circumstance might be a little bit different. You need to make sure you think that through before you apply it. So now we're done. We're going to go to the green check mark and go to the next item in here. And just like before with our fixtures, if we get out of force, out of pressure. Uh, edit an existing force or pressure or go to next and we are going to go to the next. You also have the option to go in back so you can go back in each one of these things either by going to the back button or clicking on uh, whatever uh, section we've gone through and completed so far. So we're going to go to next. I'm going to choose a material. I know our clients use an ASTM A36 steel so we're going to go ahead and apply that. Before we do this, let's talk about these colors over here. The colors in the red or the, the items over here in the material properties are going to be considered in this simulation express exercise. Ones that are in blue are secondary in nature. And unless we change some parameters, they're probably not going to be considered. And of course, the things that are in black, like thermal conductivity and specific heat, are not going to be considered in this, um, in this demonstration. So we'll go to apply. And you have to go to close. It doesn't close out until you go to close. And uh, again, it gives you a review of uh, the material properties there. And we don't want to change the material, so we're going to go to next. And this is the fun part. We're going to go to run. We get to run our uh, simulation. It actually goes pretty quick. Might take about 10, 15 seconds, maybe up to a minute, depending on the capacity of your computer. But we're going to go to run. It gives you this uh, dialog box for the mesh. It doesn't show you the mesh, yeah, but it uh, does mesh it for you in the background. And then when the dialog box disappears, it's still running its uh, simulation. So at first, it runs an an animation on its displacement. So if you're satisfied with that, you can move that around and see how far it's going to displace with 100 pounds of uh, force on that thing. It's displacing, displacing quite a bit. So we're going to press uh, Stop Animation. You have to do that. And then we're going to go to Continue. And now we're going to look at, uh, look at some, of our, uh, some of our results. So if we go to the results folder down here, now you notice that uh, as this thing's getting populated over here, we have our, our fixtures in here. We have our force applied. And now that we've run our simulation, we have the results. Starts down here with a factor of safety. Right now it's set at one over here, but we can change that. We can change that to four, uh, which is kind of typical of uh, what you would uh, anticipate in an item like, in a, in a situation like this. We want to make sure, and what that's saying is that your part is four times stronger than it needs to be for the parameters you put in here. But as you can see over here in the corner, it's given us some uh, areas that are red that uh, aren't quite right. So um, what it's saying is that uh, you know this whole part is not going to uh, be four times stronger. In fact, it says over here in our dialog box for uh, Simulation Express, it's really only 1.44855 uh, you know, stronger. That's the limit of our factor of safety. So if you put in two in here, and if you're going to change these numbers, you want to make sure you click on the outside over here in the dialog box over here. That way it'll update. You notice that the, the, the red areas have been reduced by quite a bit. So this kind of begs the question, if you really need this part to last long, maybe taking in consideration the, the lifetime of the part and fatigue that might uh, eventually uh, cause it to fail, you might want to go back to the assembly. And that's the process here. You have to go back to the assembly make the changes there, save it as a different sketch part. Right now this is uh, or not a sketch part, I should say, but a, an assembly part. This is plates two. The next iteration would be plates three. And the desire here is that you have a different simulation study for each one of these parts, these assembly parts that you're creating. So that's our factor of safety. Let's go to deformation. This is kind of like what the animation had showed us, except it's shown us uh, the, you know, the maximum deformation. Uh, displacement, which is a lot like deformation. What it does is it puts a color code on it uh, where blue is not being affected as much. And that's typical of the simulation program. Red has got the most uh, impact from, uh, from our study. 
So she says up here in red, the largest displacement is almost six inches, which is uh, might be kind of a lot. You know, the part that's only a couple feet long, six inches, is probably quite a bit of displacement. So this is part of the iterative process with simulation and simulation express. You go back to the original files, make your changes in order to, you know, maximize uh, you know, the strength of your parts while minimizing the amount of material put into it. Stress. This too is important. It shows us where our maximum stresses are. And you notice that down here on this uh, folded plate, there's a rounded plate over here that we do have a stress element here that's uh, actually fairly high. And this is uh, likely where it's going to break. So again, go back to the assembly, make changes to that part. And you notice that we do have a gap in here too. So maybe it would be appropriate to put that part beneath this other plate. So a couple different design change choices uh, you might be faced with when you're doing your element here. So when you read this, this is a uh, PSI. What we have here is 2.5 times 10 to the 4 or about 2,500 uh, PSI or is that 25,000? It's 25,000 I believe PSI. But the yield strength is 36,000 down here so that needs to be uh, taken into consideration. It's approaching the yield strength but it isn't quite there yet. So again through fatigue over the lifetime of the product, uh, uh, over the lifetime of the of the part here, you might want to consider beefing that up a little bit. So, satisfied with the results, uh, we can move on from here. So, we don't want to play or stop the animation, we're just going to move down the list down here. So, we're done reviewing the results. Um, you, we can generate a report. What it does, if you have an office suite, it'll open up uh, access. I'm uh, not going to go ahead and run that, but it, it does give you a nice uh, report and show you some of the graphics that we have in here. Plus, it gives you all the data that's associated with the background. And to show you that file that we just created, too, by the way, and uh, the location of my documents under the cloud file, this is all the data that's been generated in regard to our, our, our design. So when you go ahead and uh, access that report, it takes all this data and puts it in a visible format for you. So, and then we're going to go to next, and what that does is it takes us to optimization. We're not going to optimize it here because it's a part that can't be edited because the part has the dummy solids in it, as they call them. So these have no features to them that we can make any edits. So we're going to say no here, and then we're going to go to next. If you uh, make the mistake and say yes, um, you can still close out your part and save it. And uh, it'll allow you to it'll save all that uh, simulation data for you. So we're all done, and uh, the white X up here will close that out. And yes, you do want to save your simulation express data, so it's available for you next time. And then we're going to go ahead and close our part and save that, and it'll be uh, available for us next time. So, thank you for joining me. Uh, join me in other videos, and do make sure you save your part at the end. But uh, make sure you, um, you know, join me for their videos, and we will see you then.